The 2024 draft race is heating up. Last month, I highlighted the top 40 prospects. This month, it is the top 50, and it is such a tight talent pool. It is so much harder to make these videos than it was last year. I have a list of 80 to 90 players down, and there were guys I considered having in this video down the lower end of my rankings. It is tight. So in saying that, let's get into my August draft power rankings. Starting with the top 10. Now, I think there's a solid seven or eight guys with about three or four others on the verge in this top 10 or 11. I think there's a strong top 11 this draft with a little sub group inside of that. Picking the number one pick is hard. I have Levi Ashcroft down. Now, I had him high before, but that VFL performance for Brisbane's reserves team really convinced me. He's shown plenty at this level. He's a ball-winning machine, but the fact he's now proven against men, that is a major tick, and the Lions fans will be licking their lips knowing he is joining their list. Sid Draper at two. He's been a mainstay in that South Adelaide team in the in the Sandfall. He's a great midfielder, really rounded, Rolls-Royce type player. The reason I have him higher than most probably do is because of his leadership capabilities. He's captain his under-18 team, captain this state. I'd say He's widely viewed as the best leader in this crop or the most mentally strong young man. He has 250 games written all over him. Josh Smiley, I have him dropping down a few places. He hasn't done a lot wrong, though, just those around him exceeding expectations. He's such a valuable asset to any team, though. His size and defensive stoppage craft is awesome. His fast hands are great. His aerial work is a great point of difference as well. Jagger Smith is probably the most informed player in the draft right now. He's tearing it up in the VFL, so he's also proven against men. He's a great contested player despite having a light frame. He's such a great mover in tight space. Is, identifies the hard ball and wins it better than most. Leonardo Lombard is a bit of the same. He's much smaller but really good on ground level. He's also proven against men. He's He's been proven against men since he was 16. He won a flag with Gold Coast at 16. He won the Lark medal in the championship this year. He has one of the very best resumes here. I don't know why he isn't rated higher than he is. Luke Trainer is the best non-midfielder in the draft. He's an aerial specialist, intercepting machine. He's one of the smartest players and a really good ball user too. It's valuable to have players like this, like James Sicily. They can intercept, be, be trusted with ball and hand. Fino Sullivan at 7. He's got a very high ceiling, uh, but just hasn't put it all together in that midfield, though. He's he's unbelievably rounded. So much to his game to like. Bo Allen at 8. WA boy. Another terrific leader. Future captain. Really versatile player as well. Someone who's played down back, up forward, midfield. Great size. High ceiling. Harvey Langford at 9. The other Lark medalist. Uh, another big body. Tall midfielder who, who can play up forward. He's been compared to Bodden Pelly a lot this year. He really stands up in big moments as well. And rounding out the 10 is Murphy Reed explosive midfielder, dynamic in stoppages. He hits the ball with serious pace. He's hard to stop in full flight. Penetrating kick on him as well. And that's my top 10. It's pretty set in my eyes. There is one other player who I'll talk about in a second that I could see making his way in, but I think it's a pretty good top 10. Sam Layla at 11. This is the guy I felt weird having outside my top 10, but it just shows how good the early stages of this draft are. He could be a real steal. He isn't flashy and exciting, but his defensive presence in stoppages is worth its weight in gold. He's a tackling machine. He's another big-bodied midfielder. Job Shannon hand at 12. Maybe recency bias, but when you're kicking 11 goals in three VFL games, you're getting noticed. He's a really prominent key forward. Great size, great hands, great positional awareness, and he finishes his chances too. Uh, Tro Toby Travaglia at 13. Rebounding defender. Really offensively minded. He can split a zone open on his own, and he can keep his opponent down in the process. Uh, the best general defender in the draft. Harry Armstrong, for most of the year, he has been the best key forward of the draft. I have him slightly behind Job Shanahan now, but he's still so good. He's contested markings a treat, and he really makes defences pay. He makes the most of his chances and really stands up when it matters most. He's had some big games this year. Speaking of big, Alex Dodson, he's still tossing up between pro basketball and AFL. If he chooses AFL, he will be the best ruck in the draft. It's hard to find a ranking spot for him because he's so far ahead of other uh, rucks in this crop. He is so great around the ground. He moves so well. Pure athlete. He's going to be quite a few clubs keeping an eye on him. Isaac Kako at 16. He is the best small forward in the draft. He is so dynamic and fast. He wastes a lot of chances, but the fact he gets those chances chances is super promising. It's a bit like Nick Watson. You don't mind seeing him miss because you know he can clean that up and be a real threat in the future. Essendon NGA product, so they have access to him. He would have played for Essendon in the VFL if it wasn't for an untimely ankle injury. Christian Moraes, I was considering dropping him down the order, but then he went out and kicked five goals from 27 disposals for Eastern Rangers. He's an attacking midfielder. Alex Tyrell at 18, smaller key defender, but his hops help him play on those bigger bodies. He's a great interceptor, great athlete. Can also do a job on ground level thanks to his agility. I'm keen to see him test at the combine and he's actually played up forward recently as well, proving his versatility to his game. It's why I've bumped him up a bit. Taj Hodden, that knee injury has him slipping down every month, unfortunately. He's another attacking midfielder. He was a top 10 hopeful before the injury, so he could be a bit of a steal for some clubs later in the draft if he does slide. Some will be worried about his body, though. And Joe Berry rounding out the top 20, another really promising small forward, more damaging than Kako, and he is also pretty good in the air, which helps. Xavier Lindsay at 21, left-footed midfielder, really
really great kick. You love the ball in his hands. He loves to wheel onto that left and bomb it long. He has a really penetrating leg on him. A jaunty fall at 22, another key forward, quite a few at this range. He is one that still hasn't really got to his best, so he could rise, but he's a really good presence forward to the ground. Great sticky hands. You love kicking to him on a lead. Noah Moraz, another injury-prone key defender, but he is such a good athlete and has done nothing but impress whenever he goes out. Same with Harry O'Farrell. He isn't the interceptor like Moraz. He's more of that natural one-on-one -on -one defender. Really hard to beat one out. Less to his game than other key backs, but he's so solid, so reliable. And speaking of reliable, Angus Clark, South Aussie defender. Really great blend of attack and defense with this guy. Really well-rounded backman. Super reliable. This is a guy I probably rate higher than others, but I've just been so impressed with this season. Cooper Hines at 26. Another midfielder. The last on the open market for a little while. He's a terrific size. Really explosive and strong in the contest. He isn't as rounded, uh, but those base attributes are deadly. Jack Whitlock, another key forward. He's one who can pinch it in the ruck as well, though. Over two meters tall, but still pretty mobile. Sam Marshall, Brisbane Academy player. Gut running midfielder that can play off a flank or a wing. Good size, but also moves really well from contest to contest. He doesn't have to come off to, for too many rests. Uh, Harrison Oliver, really good playmaker that has a tough edge about him. He, like Angus Clark, is perfect to have of a halfback flank. And rounding out the top 30 is Matt Whitlock, the brother of uh, Jack, twin brother. Not as talented as his brother, or I guess he hasn't shown as much, but very versatile. He's played defense, played up forward. He's also growing to be two meters tall. The top 40, Tom Gross at 31. He's an All-Australian at champs. A uh, high half forward midfielder. Plenty of those around. Maybe that hurts his value um, because there's so many of them. He's a tough nut. Not tall, not built, but really hard at it and wins a hard ball. Also capable with foot skills to play outside. Tom Sims, another key forward. Uh, plenty of talented ones in this draft. He's two meters tall, just under two meters tall. Those long arms make him hard to spoil. He's kicked some monster bags this year at under 18 level. Ben Camparelli, a Colton father's son, all Australian at champs. Good midfielder that can play on a wing early into his career thanks to his tank. Colton fans will be happy to have him on their list. And now we've got a couple of rucks. I have them back to back because I just don't know how to split these guys. They're 50 50 in my eyes. Logan Smith has probably shown more earlier in the year. GWS Academy ruck, all Australian at champs. Really imposing figure. I'm scared of this guy. I think he might be the tallest in the draft and super strong as well and Kyle Guerin is the other WA boy very different to Smith Smith is that bash and crash and Guerin is a really skilled tool not as imposing but really capable around the ground and it's good to have two different ruck styles here someone who you want in a contest and someone who you want around the ground he can play forward as well Jesse Detoli at 36 small forward can push high up the ground and feature in the midfield a bit uh, really attacks the scoreboard so I like him as a forward in his first year Tyler Welsh at 37 recency bias has him higher up than he was before this video he kicked five goals in the sand for Adelaide Crows father son great contested mark should be good for the future especially after Tex is gone Malachi champion super exciting prospect who I had sliding a few weeks back he was in my top 60 I think a, a week or two ago but he has shown plenty in the waffle lately kicked multiple goals in his first three games really small 172 centimeters but super energetic lightning fast gonna be a handful on ground level West Coast Academy player and Ned Bowman another small forward he lit up social media when he took a massive specky before champs highlighting his aerial capabilities he's kicked 18 goals from 10 games for Nord's under 18 team and at 40 is Clancy Dennis one of the lowest ranked all Australian players from champs in this video key defender really solid he's WA born he actually took more intercept marks than anyone at champs so it's no surprise he was named all Australian Archer Day Wicks at 41 a lot lower than where we thought he would be earlier in the year he's a very talented midfielder really aggressive and really impactful when he gets the footy low disposal high impact player Adrian Cole is a key defender St Kilda NGA I believe uh, he's a pure athlete someone who will love the combine and, and probably rise the rankings after it. He's really quick. Great shutdown speed. It makes getting space on him as a forward hard. Hamish Davis is a strong bodied forward. He's been playing quite a lot of waffle footy recently for Claremont. Lucas Camparelli, the twin brother of Ben, natural wingman. He's been getting quite a bit of the ball. He isn't as amazing with it, but consistently puts himself in dangerous areas, both defensively and offensively. Charlie Nichols, yet another key forward. Stack draft for this area of the field. Nichols is up the uh, an up the field forward. He does a lot of damage wherever he goes and often dictates his own game. It, he finds himself in strange areas, but he's athletic and strong enough to be dangerous wherever he is. He's a tad wasteful, but gets plenty of chances, so that's okay in my books at this age. Jack O, he's been in great form lately. He's been winning the ball for fun in that Rebels midfield. He's a really good size as well. Genuine big-bodied midfielder, almost 195 centimeters tall, so watch out for him as that stoppage role player later in the draft. Xavier Ivisic, I said in my last video I was very surprised he wasn't invited to the combine. I think he must have taken that personally because he's on a tear. Prolific ball-winning midfielder, really good for Vic Country and has been solid for the Falcons all year. Charlie West has uh, risen the rankings after a five goal game for Woodville West Torrens in the Sandville under 18s. He's a tall forward, a great goal scorer, inconsistent, but at his best can really have a say on the game and get plenty of the ball up the field as well.
as well. He's kicked 10 goals in his last four games while averaging over 20 disposals. Jackson Artemis, he was named WA's MVP at Champs. Lightning fast rebound defender. He loves to run and gun really, really quick. One of the quickest in the draft, I would say. And finally, Jasper Alger, a small forward out of Oakley. He had a really prominent Champs campaign, kicked goals for fun. He's been doing it all year, really. He models his game off Toby Green, and you can tell by the way he pushes up the field to get that entry kick inside 50. Really prominent small forward. That is my top 50. There are obviously some guys really unlucky to miss out. Josh Dolan, Lockie Jakes, Luke Urquhart, Cody Anderson, just to name a few. Next month, I'll make it a top 60 or 70 draft power ranking, and hopefully before the draft night, I can span it out to 80, considering it's a very deep one this year. That is all for now, though. Cheers for watching. Like if you enjoyed. Comment down below your thoughts, and subscribe to stay tuned to the draft and trade period.